All right, so we got a new problem to take care of on the Pontiac. Um, I was planning on doing plug wires and a distributor swap, which I'm still going to do. But when I was just moving it in the garage, my oil light came on in the dash. And uh, so I shut the car off. And, uh, and it's just a dummy light is all that's going on. And I took a look out here and I pulled the wire off and it looks like there's some oil around there. So I think the uh, oil sender unit is probably going bad. It may have cracked and it's allowing oil to come out of it, which is fine because I was intending to replace that anyway. I was going to put a gauge in the car. And um, while the distributor and the coil was out of the way, it's gonna be a perfect time to be able to get back in there and take care of it. So you'll see why I, I'm looking to do that right now. So I'm gonna show you where that oil sender unit is before we pull anything out. But I also thought I'd show you after coming back from that car show, wasn't a very long drive, but apparently it was long enough. Take a look at the difference on the headers. Remember how I powder coated these and they were nice bright white? Well, that's just the way it works. Even powder coat doesn't hold up any better than paint does. But hey, at least this area looks real nice. <laughs> but that's all right. That is normally the look that you end up with. They don't stay perfect. Um, this just looks used. I am actually pleasantly surprised that this uh, inexpensive Chinese header wrap actually held up pretty well. It still looks, um, looks pretty fresh. So I'm all right with that. All right, so where is that oil sender unit? If you're not familiar with, um, with these cars, it is hiding back there behind the coil. I'll get you a little bit closer so you can see it. It's that silver thing with the black top on it. That is your oil pressure sender. Okay, so now with the cap and the wires out of the way, we're gonna disconnect our coil. Now, we have a couple wires that are coming to the coil. We need to figure out what's what. So, obviously from the negative side going to the distributor is what's feeding over here, so we're not worried about that, because um, that is going away. We're gonna be left with these two wires coming off the harness, so we have to figure out which one is ignition, and the other one should be coming probably from the starter, which should be giving it um, full 12 volts from the starter when you're trying to start. Um, so we're not gonna worry about that. Going to our HEI, it should be this one here, which looks like it's purple. I believe this ignition, but we're gonna test that just to make sure. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hook our ground wire up to engine ground. Hopefully that coil's grounded. Got this for voltage. I have it set for 20 volts. And then, we're going to connect this. What I ran into is the factory spade connector actually had two wires going into that spade. So I'm having to separate these wires to do our test. And when we turn our ignition to on, that one there should have juice. And we indeed have 12 volts. Now the other one should not have voltage to it. That should only have voltage if we tap the starter. So let's test that. So after that test, we've determined that the purple wire is the one that uh, we will have to connect to our HEI distributor for power and the tan or beige wire, we're not gonna need that. So we're just gonna cut that end off and put a cap on it and put it back up in the harness. It will not be needed for the HEI setup. Okay, just have to loosen it up so we can get the tab out of the way. Distributor wrench makes that a lot easier, but sometimes you can get in there with a box wrench. To lift our distributor up and out. And you'll notice it will partially rotate. That's because, well, I will show you. That's because your distributor gear is spiral, so that's why it will turn. Okay, that's out of the way. Okay, two bolts holding the uh, coil bracket in. And the one bolt is gonna be shared with our throttle bracket. So after we pull that out and get the coil holder out of the way, we'll have to put that bolt back in there.
we can get a good look at our oil pressure sending unit. Like I say, the other day when I looked at it, it was pretty wet. So I think there's probably oil coming out of this seam where the black plastic and the metal body come together. So we're going to get that out of there. And we're probably going to need some sort of an offset extension in order to get the, uh, the replacement that I'm going to be putting in. Looks like our distributor base gasket is still in place. Yeah, I should have another one of these around. So we want to make sure we get that sealed up so we don't get any oil coming out of that area as well. So this is the other sending unit that uh, is replacing the factory one. It's a bit different and I had to use some elbow so it wouldn't hit the HEI distributor. This is actually from an Alfa Romeo because I had an Alfa Romeo gauge set. So I really wanted to use it. I like the looks of it. So this is the first attempt at putting the HEI distributor in. And my intent was that I had it pointing in the right direction so that as I would uh, lock it down in that it would spin and be placed at number one or at least where I want number one to be but I ran into some complications as it turns out there's not quite enough clearance on the firewall for an HEI distributor so you have to massage that firewall just a little bit not a lot just enough to get that in there so now we can actually install the distributor after a little bit of trial and error, I managed to get that uh, gear to engage and into the oil pump shaft and placed it number one. We'll put our bolt back in for holding down the distributor and add our cap and then we'll be on to the blow wires. I got this set of um, Moroso Universal wire set. Uh, these you make to fit your vehicle, that is you cut them to length and put the boots on. Uh, there's plenty of videos out there on how to do this, but I was pretty happy I found this Made in the USA set to use for this car. Now as I started putting these plug wires together, I thought I'd make mention since I didn't film it. Um, that purple wire that we diagnosed earlier in the video, that is going to go to the battery terminal side of the distributor. If you look at the top of your HEI, if it's a factory GM, one side is going to be listed as TAC, the other side is going to be battery. And that is where you're going to need to make a connection with that purple wire. Yeah. Well, we're running. That's why I got to set the timing. Properly set the timing, we'll have to unplug the vacuum advance and then put a plug in the vacuum line. If you've not used a timing gun before, um, basically the uh, pickup has got to be connected to your number one plug wire and then you're going to be pointing it at the timing tab. You should be able to see the timing mark and then you're going to rotate the distributor one direction or the other to advance or to retard the timing. Timing set, we'll go ahead and tighten down this distributor hold down. So the last thing I'm going to do on this HEI conversion is we're going to make a few wire looms for this. And the best way to do that is just with a handful of zip ties and a drink and to get to it. I'm not going to go through point by point on how to make your own wire looms using dip, zip ties. There are plenty of other videos already on YouTube on how to accomplish this. 
but I think for the price, it looks pretty darn good, and it works. So I've been doing this on a lot of my, uh, so to say, rat rod style projects. So I went through a lot of trouble trying to get that uh, sender unit in so I could use this uh, Alfa Romeo gauge that I picked up at the junkyard years ago. But uh, the sender unit's no good, so I can't use this gauge. Um, and I really need something for an oil pressure gauge for in this car. So this is what I'm going to end up using. This is um, out of a barn. This is part of a car that I haven't revealed yet that um, it's been sitting <laughs> in storage for a couple years that I got out of a barn. So I'm kind of scarfing some of its parts. Um, this is all I had was just this gauge and this holder, which is mounted in upside down, actually. It should be the other way. But um, since there's only a single there and I don't have a uh, water temp gauge, what I'm going to end up poss possibly doing is either using this Stuart & Warner amperage gauge or this old Sun Tune which I'm really not wild about this, but it does match the other one with the sweep. So I'm not quite sure yet which one I'm gonna do. So I wound up going with the Stuart & Warner amp gauge. Now I didn't connect the amp gauge, I just put it in there to fill that hole for now. Uh, long term I need to get a water temp gauge, so I wanna get one that matches the oil pressure. Gauge works, so I'm pretty happy with that. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and finally address this body work and this damage on that front fender. The other thing that I want to do is um, rebuild the carburetor. That is the carburetor that originally came on this engine. And so we can get it running even better. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.